Today I'm continuing on a theme uh, I began last month when I read this book, Blue Blood and Mutiny, The Fight for the Soul of Morgan Stanley. Well, this month it's another book about another of the big Wall Street financial firms, and this one's called The Last Tycoons, The Secret History of Lazard Frere and Company. Well, Lazard is a 150-year-old firm based in Paris and London and New York. It's known as um, an aristocratic and secretive firm that dispenses financial advice to corporations, governments, and the ultra-wealthy. The uh, author is William Cohan, and he worked as a, as a banker at Lazard for many years, and he knows all the gossip for at least the last hundred years. And he tells the story about the gruesome struggle between the aristocratic French family that owned the firm and the Wall Street sharks that got the better of them. Uh, they wound up uh, controlling the company, taking it public, and booting the aristocrats out. Now, this is a juicy story, but... But look, it's 700 pages long. Uh, I was traveling in Europe last week and had a lot of airline time, and so I had time to kill to, to get to the end of the book. But without that, I'm not sure I would have made it. The firm had strong Jewish roots ever since the three Lazard brothers left France in the 1840s for New Orleans, where they made a fortune trading gold, silver, and currency, eventually establishing themselves as transatlantic bankers for the European elite. But by the 1930s and 40s, the uh, principals in the firm had to flee Nazi Germany and established in New York. It took them until the 60s and 70s to become established as Wall Street's most powerful firm specializing in corporate mergers and acquisitions. They had a major role, for instance, in building up IT&T as an early American conglomerate in the Richard Nixon days. There's some great stories in here about political influence peddling and the huge fees collected. By the 1970s, though, uh, a Lazard family member, uh, Michelle David Wheel, uh, was in control of the firm. Inside, he was known as the Sun King, and uh, his opulent lifestyle was certainly worthy of that of Louis XIV. He made $100 million in a good year as the wave of corporate M&As in the 80s made Lazard more profitable and powerful than ever. But to handle all this business, he had to hire a new crop of New York-style bankers uh, who were far different from the civilized and refined crowd he was used to in Paris. The last one he hired was Bruce Wasserstein, and he would prove to be by far the most effective for better and for worse. Born in Brooklyn, Wasserstein made a fortune as an investment banker, uh, and he uh, earned the reputation as bit -em up Bruce because his corporate acquisitions tended to be very expensive. Now, Wasserstein is Lazard's uh, CEO today because he outmaneuvered Michelle David Wheel, forcing Lazard from that private partnership into a public company. This was in May 2005. David Wheel and his family, of course, walked away with a few hundred million bucks, but Wasserstein gained control of this multi-million dollar firm for zero personal investment. Uh, it's interesting to know that uh, Wasserstein had a pay package last year of about $36 million, uh, including stock. Now, this is, book is full of unsavory deals that Lazard did under the year, over the years. There, in one case, they had to pay $100 million in fines to set a, settle a municipal bond kickback scandal. And there's also details about the conspicuous consumption, the vanity, the betrayals, the mansions, the private art collections. Um, it's like WorldCom and Enron combined, but done in a much more discreet way. Wasserstein snookered the aristocrats, took control of the firm, and made a huge amount of money doing so. If you're interested in the inner workings of Wall Street uh, and enjoyed this book about Morgan Stanley, you might want to consider this monster. I mean, there's some great stories here about incompetence, vanity, and deceit, and the riches it produced. But I warn you, it needs editing. 700 pages. There's a 250-page book trying to escape here somehow. So for its content, I'll give it one thumb up. But for its excessive length, one thumb down. 
But it is interesting to get an inside view of Wall Street and all its successes. The same Wall Street that Elliot Spitzer, of all people, tried to clean up.